All right, this is reduction of a simple distributed loading. So if we had a beam attached to a wall, and then on this side, there's a roller. Okay, I'm gonna call this the W axis, and this the X axis. So we will have distributed loading like this. And this curve is known as WX, where WX is equal to PX times B, which gives you um, units of either Newton per meter or pound per foot. So B is considered the width of the beam. And P of X is equal to the pressure loading that varies only along the X axis. So when you look at this, we don't have any methods to solve this problem. So we need to find a way to replace this loading with an equivalent force. So if we have the same beam, touch the wall and over a roller, x-axis and w. So under there would be W, and what we'd want to do is we would want to replace this whole thing with just one force, we'll call it FR, the resultant force. And FR acts at the centroid of the area under the curve. So what that tells us is that FR is equal to the integral over the entire length of WX DX, which is also equal to the integral over the area of the area. Such and this is equal to the area. So long story short, the um, resultant force is going to be equal to the area under the curve. And you can find that um, utilizing integration. So where this FR acts is called X bar. And this entire beam has length L. So it's important to know where the resultant force is acting so that you can determine the resultant moment um, or any other things that are necessary for the problem. So X bar can be found by the integral over the length L of x times w of x dx divided by the integral over the length of w of x dx. Or another way to put that, the integral over the area of x times dA divided by the integral over the area DA. Okay. So this is how you um, would find where the resultant force acts. So you'd need to do the integration to determine that. And then what you can find is you could find like the moment about let's say 0, .0 would be equal to it's clockwise so negative x bar times fr. So now we have the tools to make this entire thing be represented 
in just a force um, and where the force is located so that you can represent it by a moment as well. So let's look at a simple example. So let's say I had a beam. On one side there's a pinned connection and on the other side it sits on a roller. And these are my axes, W and X. The whole beam is length L. And the distributed loan, load forms a right triangle. And uh, WL is the height of the triangle. So if we wanted to replace this by an equivalent force, we can see right here that we could do the integral. But since this is such simple geometry, there's really no point in doing it. So it's also equal to the area, right? The area right here. So it's a triangle. Area of a triangle is really easy to find. So the area is equal to 1 half the base, which is L times the height, which is WL, which the area is equal to the resultant force. So now we found the resultant force of this one fairly quickly. So now let's find where that X bar is. So first let's put this in form of Y equals MX plus B. So W of X is equal to MX plus B. Okay, so B is zero, right, because it intersects at the origin. And then at L, we want it to be equal to WL. So we would do WL over L times X is equal to WX. So now we need to find X bar. X bar is equal to the integral over the entire length of zero to L times x wx dx divided by the integral of 0 to L of wx dx. So now if we start plugging in the integral from 0 to L of w times w of x is right here, excuse me, 0 to L x and now we want to put in w of x so that's w of L over L X DX and this one down here is just equal to FR right this is the same thing as this so we can just put in our uh, the result of FR for the triangle which was one half L W L so this is equal to W L over L can be pulled out the integral of 0 to L of x squared dx divided by 1 half L W L which is equal to W L over L take the integral of x squared which is x cubed over 3 evaluate from L to 0 by 1 half L W L which is equal to W L over L L cubed over 3 divided by 1 half L W L. Okay, so let's simplify this down. Put it so that we've got W L L cubed divided by 3 L. Then let's see, the 2 would be actually on top, and then L W L would be on the bottom, so it would be L squared W L. Now we can simplify, WLs cancel, the L squares, make it so that that's just an L. We get that X bar is equal to 2 thirds L. So now we know that this entire distributed load can be redrawn as an equivalent force and um, a location. So the equivalent force right here FR 
which is equal to W L over L. Oops, I'm sorry. F R is equal to one half L W L. It's located at X bar, which is two thirds L. Okay. So this really gives you two different options for how to handle. So now that we know what a triangle looks like, we know um, that FR is the area, and we know that X bar for a right triangle is going to be two thirds um, of the entire length, where um, it's two thirds to the point um, towards the uh, right end of the triangle, right? So if it was the opposite, if it was drawn the opposite way, then it would be two thirds from the end, so it would only be a third over. So anyways, now when you see in your homework that you've got a triangle, um, you can find the area, which is going to be FR, and then you know that X bar is always going to be two-thirds L. And so this makes it a lot simpler than having to go through this the whole time. It's the same thing with a rectangle, right? If you're given a rectangle, you know how to find the area of a rectangle. It's really simple. And then the centroid of a rectangle, where it's going to act, is right smack dab in the middle. So that makes this easier to solve than just doing this.